What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know it's Real Talk Sports Talk. Live from my man cave, it's your boy, Johnny, and I am here with... It's your boy, the Maniac. That's what's up from Four Corners Boxing. What's going on, my brother? Welcome back to the Hangout Spot, man. Man, thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it, man. You know, it's always a pleasure when you have me on, man, because when I'm here with you... You know, we, we we only do one thing, man. We cook. We put that apron on. We get right in the kitchen. We 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 get the sasson. We get the adobo because we're gonna we gonna cook. You already know, brother. That's why I got you back here, man. Because let me tell you something. This week, wow. Like you say, man. Oh man. Man. Oh man. This oh, weekend, yeah. the fight fans are the real winners. We got a banger. In fact, we got a double header, two different channels. Sometimes it stresses me out a little bit when they do that, right? Because it kind of steals the other car's shine. But for this particular case, I'll make an exception. Yeah. It. You know what I mean? The more boxing, the better. You already know how we do here. The world is always a better place with more and more boxing. And this Saturday, it is on PBC is putting together their second card with on Amazon Prime. Correct. The first one was a banger. Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora. Let's not forget that main event as well as the undercard. This one should be a goodie as well. Headlined by Tank Davis against Frank Martin, two undefeated guys. And then you got the Mexican monster, David Benavidez in the co-main event for an interim light heavyweight title against Alexander Gbatsik. That's going to be fire. We're going to get into that in a second. But let's talk about this past weekend mm. because we had a Puerto Rican Day weekend in New York City. We had Zan Desires headlining his first uh, boxing card. And we know that Top Rank is trying to push this whole Zan Desires is going to be this next Puerto Rican superstar that we can market every single year during Puerto Rican Day weekend. Before we get into that um, that fight, you were there on hand, live and direct with the Four Corners crew. What type of atmosphere was going on at the Garden Saturday night? Yeah, man. So you know the 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 theater the theater was in flames, man. I mean, anybody that was there would tell you. I mean, it was it was it was a sellout. I mean, every section was crowded, but on top of that, the energy, Johnny, you know, when you have a room full of Puerto Ricans, right, you know what happens, right? We we prideful people, banderas, flags, for those who don't know what a bandera is, that's a flag, waving, yelling, screaming. It was just electric, right? Just to sum it up in one word. And it, it's it just, it gives you that feel like, yeah, I'm here. This is this is what I like. This is a, a a Puerto Rican weekend fight week, right? Because Cotto was pretty much the face of Puerto Rican weekend, right? I believe he fought Malinaji, he fought Zab Judah, he fought um Sergio Martinez, he fought Joshua Clady, a fight I was at. And I believe someone else. I, I just don't remember, but that's already like four fights. So, you know, like you said, and all of those were promoted by who? Like top rank. So they definitely, they're on to something when it comes to Puerto Ricans. They know how to, you know, um, make sure they touch in with that market, New York City, with the Puerto Ricans. So they just continuing the tradition, man, and pushing Zon desires. And the reason why I ask you about the energy is because I know that mostly everybody there was anticipating Zayas knocking out Patrick Teixeira, right? Everybody wanted to see a spectacular performance, and we all know there was no knockout. Xander Zayas wins this fight fairly easy on the scorecards. In fact, this was a 10-round unanimous decision. I had the fight scored a 10 nothing shutout. So realistically, I wasn't disappointed in his, in his performance. Did I want to see a knockout? Absolutely, but you got to take into consideration a couple of things. Number one, Patrick Teixeira is a former world champion. He's a seasoned veteran. He's a tough guy, and it's the first time that Zayas actually fought a southpaw. Now, I'm not saying this to make excuses. I'm just giving you the facts. The facts? However, again, 
there are some people that were a little bit more critical than I was about his performance. Tell me what you thought about that, because like I said, the agenda here is to to make Zayas the next Puerto Rican Day staple at the Garden every year. Did he do enough in this performance to say yay or nay, in your opinion? Wow. So, you know, as as I did my, my post fight, right, I mentioned, I said, is he the next one? And, you know, I paused like, mm, mm. you know, it's it's kind of tough, right? We, we I think we're kind of limbo when it comes to Xander. We don't, it's not like you could kind of may probably see it and you could kind of see him maybe not. But let's speak the facts, like you said, right? Let's let's talk about his performance. Why he did well. He did, he jabbed well. He went to the body extremely well. He threw very good combinations, right? These are things that you want to see in these young fighters, right? Arsenal. What do you have on your tool belt, right? I always say you can't build a table with just a hammer. You're going to need more tools on your tool belt to build the table, right? So Zonda showed us he has some tools. Now, is he that typical Puerto Rican puncher? I would say probably not. But maybe he's a different kind, right? Maybe he's going to be a fighter that, you know what? He's going to win these fights, but not in the fashion we want him to win the fights. And in boxing, you don't need a win pretty all the time you just need a win and if, if that's gonna mean zonda is gonna win in those ways where he's just gonna box his way to a decision and people might say ah hey, there's that it is what it is but regardless the performance to me was i'll give it about a a b plus right i'll give it about a b plus um he did what he had to do with the exception of the knockout he did put his foot to the gas around the seventh round or eighth, I'm not sure which round was it, where it looked like Teixeira was going to go. But you got to remember, this is a very experienced fighter here, right? This is a former interim champion, right? Not a, a, a world, but he did beat Carlos Adames, right? Who we're going to be speaking about later on in the show. And sure. he dropped him. So Teixeira is a gritty veteran. This is not Mickey Mouse Jim here. You know, Zonda did what he was supposed to do. And um, it didn't give me, oh, he's the next one. Absolutely no. It didn't give me that. But like I said, Johnny, it just had me in limbo. I'm just like, mm, I just got to see more. I just got to see more. And like any other fighter, his time will come where we'll say, okay, this is the fight where we're going to know who he really is. Now, that's fair. That's fair because... I wasn't at the fight. I was listening to the broadcast while it was happening. And I got to be honest with you, bro. I was super stressed out over the criticism that Tim Bradley gave Xander Zayas. And, and, and maybe a little bit of it was warranted, but it was almost like you don't get a knockout. It's just a crappy performance. I mean, it was to me, it was over the top. Again, I don't know how other fans are going to see that. There was a point where I was about to mute the TV. Real talk. But anyhow, listen, I get what you're saying. And, and this is why I wanted to get your take on it, because when I heard your recap the next day, then that made sense to me. Um, you brought up a couple of things that, 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 I, that, I, that I noted here that I want to touch on. You're right. Most Puerto Ricans want to see that Trinidad, that one punch knockout power, that that left hook from from beyond. I mean, we saw it with Trinidad. We saw it with Cotto. Maybe Zayas is more of the boxer type. Maybe we're going to get, and I say this, again, it might be premature. I'm not comparing them, but maybe we're going to get the Puerto Rican version of Floyd Mayweather. Who knows? That may not be a bad thing either, right? Yeah. What I did like about Xander is you're right. You know, I like the body work. I like the fact that he was busy. And for a guy, especially a young guy who's winning a fight, fairly easy in the latter rounds. I didn't think that he took the foot off the gas either. I thought that he was trying to go for the stoppage. He just couldn't get it. And you're right. There was a couple of points at the end of that fight where I thought maybe the referee was going to consider stepping in, but they didn't. But you got to give Teixeira a lot of credit. Um, I think the main thing that I take out of this fight, Maniac, is that he got 10 really good rounds of work. He's 21 years old. These are the type of fights, honestly, 
that I wish Edgar Belanga would have been, been in when he was 21 years old. Feel me? You know, because I think that these are the fights that are going to make Xander even better and better. And Edgar didn't have those. At 21, he had like 15, 20, whatever it was. And first round knockouts only had 15 rounds. You know, and now we're seeing at 27 years old, you know, maybe those rounds early on in his career would have did him better. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I also forgot to mention one thing that actually two things also on top of that. One, one thing that I don't care what anybody says, when he's in that ring, he shows maturity, right? He fights like a veteran. He has like a veteran mindset. He's in there. He's not forcing the action, right? He He's showing, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to take what my opponent gives me, right? And, and that's why. That's what I love about him. He doesn't, and secondly, he doesn't fight for the crowd, right? He's just like, listen, I'm going to do what I got to do. Because you tend, you'll get reckless in there, and that's when you're going to get clipped with something. Just look at me. You, you mentioned one fighter, Mayweather. People could say what they want. When he was money, when he was money made, he was probably one of the most boring fighters. Now, people be like, oh, I mean, it, no, I know it, it's hit and not get hit. I'm not taking nothing from Floyd. I'm just saying, let's be honest. When we was there, we was just like, okay, mm -hmm, another round. Mm -hmm, all good. right, yeah. You know, so listen, it is what it is. If if Zonda's going to be giving us those performance, but in those performance, he's beating top fighters and he's beating them definitively, then no one could complain, man. You, you, you can't, you can't have it all, man. Right? right. It's like you, come on, you can't eat a chuleta with a pizza. That just don't mix. It's good. Right. It, it's good. But you, you got to choose oh. sometimes you, you, you just can't be over the top. So Zon desires to me, he's still a work in progress. Um, top he's with the right promotional company because they know what they are doing. And he mentioned three fighters, Johnny. He mentioned three fighters. So that's Josh Kelly. He's out. He's a European fighter. He mentioned newly signed fighter and Vito Malecki from Jersey. And the third fighter, which please sign me up, the hammer from your state right now, Erickson Lubin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you tell me, Johnny. Listen, uh, you 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 kind of read my mind because that's what I was going with next, right? So what's next for him? What what is a good fight that we'd like to see him, uh, you know, next time around? Because honestly, you can't take a step backwards now. No, he just fought a former world, you know, interim world champion. Now we got to start to up the competition. I thought Vito Mil Milanecki was an interesting name, but you wonder if Top Rank would do that. Two young guys. You know that aren't really as established at that level. Do they try to do that now? Or do they wait to kind of build them up? I think that would be a really, really good fight. Josh Kelly would be interesting. That's a huge step up. The hammer. I don't know. I'd sign up for it. Listen, I think you're right, man. You 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 hit it on the head. He's 21 years old, but it almost it's almost like he fights like a season, like a 27, 28 year old. I like that mindset. I love the confidence they did. An interview. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see it. Probably not. Yeah. You were there live. They did an interview where they where they asked him what were the five, the top five, um, one hundred fifty four pounders. He put himself number one. Yeah, he said he'll he'll fight Crawford. I think I saw that on you. Yeah, listen, I, I, don't, I don't knock it. Uh, is listen, it, I don't is, knock confident. You you have to though. You have you can't, Johnny. Right? You can't say it's a different saying. Oh, I'm the best fighter in the world. Right. And it's like, OK, based on what? Right. Not some fighters, you know, I think that will be over the top. But to say I'm the best in my division, then it's like, OK, I could see that. Right. I, I feel like nobody could beat me. So you need that confidence to go in there. You, you can't go in there and say, oh, I'm fighting Crawford. Damn. Now you got to say, I'm going to fuck his ass up. Excuse my language, guys. Ah, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to whoop his ass. Now, of course. I don't think that that happened, but you know what? I love the confidence, and I understand that he knows that. Listen, I ain't no fighter gonna put fear in my heart. You understand? I, I I can fight with these guys, and we're gonna see, man. We're we're definitely gonna see. Um, 
what what the future holds. Because you know, I did see the interview with Melnicki, and he mentioned that Zonder will not be right away. I think you know, um, top rank want to capitalize a little bit before they do that. So if 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 Zander's gonna fight him, I don't think it will be this year. It'll probably be early next year, but. Um, Josh Kelly would be interesting. You know, I've I seen Josh Kelly fight about three times on the zone and these Mickey Mouse cards they have. He's a tough fighter. I, I, I think Xander, it'll be a, it'll be definitely, you know, a, another step up because this is a younger fighter who could box and he's fresher. But I just, I'm not really sold on these European fighters. A lot of them, they fools go, man. They look good. They look good from a distance. But when they close up, they like laundry on Sunday. They just fold, man. So I'm not, I'm not really so. So I like him. I think he beat Mel Nicky. If they fight tomorrow, he beats him. Now, Erickson Lubin, the reason why I love that fight, Johnny, because Lubin, he's been in there with Charlo. He's been in there with Fundora. He's been in there with Jesus Ramos. So Lubin is he and he's still in his prime. You understand? So he's a seasoned veteran that's young. And Lubin could box and Lubin could punch. Mm -hmm. So we don't we haven't seen Zonda's chin really tested, right? And his defense, it, it's hard to get a really a judgment. It's not like he gets hit regularly, but it's not like he has Mayweather defense and been who really does. So that's why I would like to see it because it is a huge measuring stick. It will let us know where he's at. He goes in there and he beats Lubin, whether it be a domination or a close fight. Man, forget about it. Then you you gotta you gotta say, yo, listen, Zonda's for real. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I'm here with the boxing maniac from Four Corners Boxing. Speaking of maturity, confidence, having all the goods. Shoe York City was in the house as well in the co main event. Bruce Shoe Shoe Carrington. He actually stops Brian De La Gracia in the eighth round. Nice, methodical, classical performance. Broke him down. And then when he needed to get him out, he got him out. I'm impressed with him. He's 27 years old. I do agree with Bradley on this point. I think he's ready for a title shot. That's what they were saying, even though he only has 12 wins. But we also know that the monster, in a way, was in the crowd as well. Yeah. I don't know if that was done purposely or, the, or in a way, just wanted to come and see his boys play the Yankees. You know, his boys on the Dodgers play the Yankees. I don't know. I know he was at Yankee Stadium Friday, too. Yeah. But there's got to be a little bit of the Bob Arum is like, maybe we need to get this on. If that happens, and I know that will be a little bit far-fetched because in a way, would have to move up and wait. Do you think that Shushu is ready for that type of smoke? So when you look at it on the surface, you say absolutely not. This is not this is not a fight Shushu wins. In the way, he's just too good. He's too seasoned. Um, he, he's he's mature. He got he just has when I talk about the two belt, he has everything in his arsenal. He has anything. He's building tables. He's building dresses. He's putting the TV on the wall. He's, he, he's building you. He, he's putting the tiles on the floor. He has everything in his two belt. I don't think he was born in this planet. No. Oh, yeah. Hello, Area 51 resident. I sold him property over there. Remember, I'm the number one realtor when it comes to Area 51. And I'll break that down, down oh, the man. line. But oh, man. listen, man. Let's just, before we even get to that, right, let's just touch on Shushu's performance real quick, right? Because what I do see in Shushu, another one, right? He's another person that he doesn't get frustrated in there, right? He never looks like, damn, he looks flustered. He takes his time. He understands what is he doing. He said, listen, it might take a little longer, but I'm going to get it done. And what I love about Shushu, Johnny, He's not afraid to play in the mud. And what I mean by that, he's not afraid to get dirty, get in there and fight in, in the phone booth and, and get the win. However, if he can't outbox you, then he's going to get in the mud. He's going to say, all right, we're going to walk in this mud because I'm going to get this win. 
And he has showed time and time again that, look, man, I don't play with my fool, man. Shoe, shoe don't play. Look, I don't know how many fights in the theater right now. I believe this is his fourth one, maybe fifth. Someone in the comments down the line, cause I just don't know. But he has won all of them by knockout here in New York City. Every fight he has fought in that yeah. Hulu theater, he has stopped his opponent. Shoe, shoe, without a doubt to me, is ready for a title fight. But the question becomes, Johnny, the four featherweight champions currently are, and after I say this, I want you to tell me what you think. One, newly crowned champion, Nick Ball, right, from the UK. That's one. Two, Rafael Espinosa. The dude is like six feet, six one. Just, he beat Robisi a couple of months ago. Three, Another tour fighter, Mexican, Ray Vargas. And four, to me, arguably the best champion of them all, Luis El Venado Berto Lopez. Mm. Who are those four? Because those are the champions. They're just off the bat, you say, all right, I like Shushu against him. Him, I, I it's it's tough. It, it's tough. Um, you put me on the spot here, which I like. You keeping me on my toes. The hangout spot. You keeping me on my toes. That's what's up. <laughs> um, off the bat, I say Shushu beats Nick Ball, and I, I and, and listen, I'm not saying that he's gonna wash Nick mm -hmm. Ball. Nick Ball's a tough dude. He showed me a lot against Ray Ford this last fight. He's relentless. But again, Shushu's not the type that's gonna panic, and he he can get into the trenches. He can punch. He's he can punch a lot harder than Ray Ford. I think he will hurt Nick Ball coming in. So I like him against Nick Ball. Espinosa will be interesting because of the height. But I like him in that fight as well. And it's more of a Shushu thing than a knock on Espinosa. But again, this is my initial thought. Once I start to break it down. You ask me this question two weeks from now, I may give you a different answer. Yeah. Right now, I'm riding the shoe shoe train because I've seen him recently, I got to say. I think that Luis Alberto Lopez is tough for anybody. That style is crazy. It's awkward. It comes from all different angles. I don't know about that one. Ray Vargas? I think he can beat Ray Vargas. I mean, we've seen... Ray Vargas get beat before. I mean, arguably, I think Nick Ball beat him, although they call that a draw. Um, and then we saw what happened to him, obviously, against Oshaki. I believe Oshaki. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think Shushu will, will, can beat him, too. So I guess to answer your question, I I, 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 I see him beating two. The other two, we got to see. And again, Espinosa, like I said, the more I think about it, the height, the boxing ability, he did beat Robesi Ramirez. That's a tough one, but um, the future's bright. The, you know, regardless, the future's bright. I'd be interesting to see what they uh, what they come up with next with Shushu. I like him. Um, I think he's the future um, of the featherweight division. It's time to rock and roll. Like I said, he's 27 years old. He's entering his prime. You know, yeah. let's get it popping. You know, let's stop wasting time. And that was and, and just and, and and it's good you mentioned that right. 20. And that was only his 12th fight. So the ball got to start rolling is now the time is now. But also before, I, before I went off about them champions, you did ask me the, the end away question, right? So I don't want to duck that question. So we know you mentioned it. Um, we know in way is currently the undisputed junior featherweight. That means he'll have to go up to 126 to fight Shushu. But I, we, you know, Shushu will have to have something to offer before he'll make that jump. So that means he gotta have he gotta have that gold around his waist before before in the way we'll we'll think about that. And it's an easy fight, right? Um, top rank co promotes in the way, and um, top rank promotes Shushu a hundred percent. So it's a fight that it's 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 very doable, and I know that. Um, you know, Shushu, he, he's with it. He's with the smoke. You know, he's he, he mentioned it. He, he don't mind. Um, is If that fight was to happen, let's say in September, regardless, I have to favor in the way. 
But we've seen it, right, where I said Tio had no chance against Lomachenko. I said, listen, Tio's nice, but he's not ready. He's young. And we saw what happened. So, mm -hmm. you know, you never know. You never know. But anybody that knows the sport is going to favor in the way. But Shushu will have a chance in that fight. To say he doesn't. It's crazy. Remember, it's at 126. So before people be like, oh, he'll kill Shu Shu. We haven't seen in the way at 126. And we've seen him get rocked in his last fight. And, and don't get me wrong. After that, he cooked. He dominated. But what I'm saying is, ain't no man invisible, Johnny. You understand? Ain't no man invisible. So you you it, it, that any night could be that night. Where, yo, you just had an off game. Jordan didn't score 30 points every game, right, Johnny? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Same thing with boxing. This is boxing, baby. And let me tell you something. The one thing I can tell you is the future's bright.